Hallelujah. Father, help us this morning in the name of Jesus. Our hearts are open to receive. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that it's a new season for us. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Let grace rest upon someone this morning. Let your hand be evident upon someone's life this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. While standing, again, please help me honor Pastor Godman and his dear wife. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. So, we'll do it this way. It'll be a teaching session, but it'll also be a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. So, every once in a while, we'll stand to pray or at least pray while sitting. Just open up your heart. It's an impartation this morning and I'm trusting honestly that grace will rest from heaven over someone's life in the name of Jesus while I prayed about my final session all I kept hearing in my spirit was speed acceleration speed acceleration speed and so my charge for us this morning is because God has seen that someone's pace is too slow there is a grace that wants to move you move you forward you believe that shout amen, amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Genesis chapter 27. There are three factors that are responsible for the results that we command in this kingdom. Three principal factors. Number one, wisdom. Number two, faith. Number three, power. These are the tripartite forces that if missing in the life of a believer, you will never, never be a representation of the glory of God. Number one is wisdom. Access to the mysteries of the kingdom alongside the knowledge of the dynamics on how to engage them. Most believers are not able to excel in life because they lack wisdom. I'll tell you the difference. You can have knowledge, but knowledge is not wisdom. Knowledge means a coordinated gathering of useful information, but it does not mean you know how to activate them for your profiting. Knowledge is important because you cannot have wisdom without knowledge. Wisdom is derived from knowledge. Are we together? So most believers have knowledge knowledge gathers information understanding explains the working dynamics of the knowledge you now have then wisdom supplies the grace to engage the truths so that it profits you so for everyone who wants to change their level in life and destiny spiritually economically your first prayer should be access to wisdom he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches that those that seek me early there is timing to the pursuit of wisdom hallelujah dot not wisdom cry the bible says there is a relationship between wisdom and mighty works if you lack mighty works if your life is full of small things the diagnosis is that you are bankrupt of wisdom someone say wisdom shout it again say wisdom. wisdom i'm saying that because that is what is resting upon someone Amen. you can tell the kind and the dimension of wisdom at work in you by the results that your life commands wisdom most believers lack wisdom wisdom is different from intelligence intelligence means that your intellect has been so developed along an area of thought are we together yes just because your intellect is quickened does not mean you are wise. Many people are intelligent, but not wise. They are academically intelligent, but they are not wise. You cannot see them engage the principles of the kingdom. So we are not talking about being intelligent. It's important to be intelligent. It enhances your manifesting wisdom. But I know many intelligent people who are completely bankrupt of the wisdom of God. I needed to say that so you do not flatter yourself that, oh, I'm intelligent and that means I'm wise. The wisdom, you see, 
there are several kinds of wisdom in fact the bible teaches about five dimensions of wisdom godly wisdom five expressions of it but i'm not getting into there divine direction is a subset of wisdom divine strategy is a subset of wisdom wisdom is not just generic in its operation are we together now when you want to prosper these are the two dimensions of wisdom you need divine strategies and divine direction it is not every dimension of wisdom that directly translates to the prosperity of an individual <laughs> are we learning this morning should i pursue and he says pursue it will pursue you will overtake and without fail he says you will recover are we together this is very important wisdom how do you access wisdom there are many ways to access wisdom from as taught in scripture you can access wisdom first and foremost by engaging the law of the lord the law of the lord the word of god is able to make men wise it says I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified and that word that the Bible says is the compendium of God's wisdom Christ came not just to reveal the wisdom of God he came as the wisdom of God so as you interact with the word of God you access wisdom wisdom by knowing the ways of the spirit and knowing how to engage the ways of the spirit for your profiting are we together yes you can access wisdom directly from God through prayer you can pray yourself into a wiser version of yourself because prayer allows for transitions in the spirit Luke 9 I believe verse 29 and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering it is it is possible for someone to pray a foolish version of yourself into a wise version of yourself lord i'm tired of making unwise decisions and you begin to pray you align your mind with that of the holy spirit and you will be surprised at the remarkable results that come out of your life for someone here you are not an evil person but all the results around your life are the results of somebody who does not know God the missing ingredient is wisdom there are many sincere people who keep punishing themselves with decisions that are self-sabotaging because it may be a popular decision but it's not founded by wisdom can you lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry for wisdom at a higher level go ahead pray pray be serious pray tired of making decisions that are pegging my life down pegging my business down pegging my ministry down someone lay your hands upon your head and speak Shabbat kaparu sabrendesia wisdom 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 hallelujah wisdom is directly revealed in the quality of the decisions that you make because decisions in truth decide destiny every every step every next step in your destiny is at the mercy of the kind and the quality of decisions that you make now let me tell you something about decisions nobody has the power to choose consequences you don't choose consequences you make choices and decisions and with every choice and every decision there are consequences connected are we together yeah so if your life and my life is not making constructive progress we must go back to the drawing board and investigate carefully the basis of our decisions wisdom number two faith faith the bible says the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith what is faith 
the action you take as a demonstration of your persuasion over God's integrity, the action that you take, not just the confession that you make, the action of obedience that attests to the fact that you believe God. Faith is not just believing God. You can believe God and yet you're not walking by faith. Faith goes beyond the realm of believing. I am believing God. I agree with you, but that will not bring results for you. Are we together now? If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. And the one who actually got up and walked on water was the one manifesting faith. I hope you know he never said, Peter, come. Peter was the one who asked a question, but he said, come. That means anyone, anyone at all, the one who walked on water was not the one who heard Jesus. The one who walked on water was the one who took the step. The name of that step was faith. They heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it everything in your life your exploits in this kingdom is always and will always be faith dependent i learned early in life and ministry that there are no guarantees anywhere there are no guarantees anywhere vain is the help of man but the bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened say faith I'm shaking on belief from someone this morning because your disappointment is because you have channeled your, your trust and confidence on people and vain systems and they keep disappointing you. Faith, the confident assurance that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent, that if he has said it is within his power to make it happen. There are two things that makes God mighty. Number one is that he has integrity. Number two, that he is all powerful. These are the attributes of God that faith is hinged on. Number one, his integrity. Number two, his might, his power. There are people who have integrity. They are well intentioned, but they do not have the wherewithal. So they want to help. They intend to help, but they do not have the power. There are others who have the power to help, but they lack the consistency of character to keep their word. God has both integrity and ability. This is the basis of our trust in him. That when God says all nations will call you blessed, he meant everything he said. It is up to you now to believe and engage by faith. Are we together now? If you do not understand the dynamics of faith, believe me, you will not make progress, not constructive progress. You cannot do great things for the kingdom. You see, the way God speaks to men, he speaks to men like he's speaking to himself. You may have heard me say this, when God talks to you, he does not talk to you at your level. He talks to you like he's talking to himself. There is a dimension of him in you that he's speaking to. That is the reason why everything he tells you is not what you can do by your strength. When you hear God and the instruction is what you can do by yourself, you most likely had a familiar spirit. God will have to tell you something that will require faith. It will be a bigger instruction than your current capacity. You will always need to grow to obey God. Did you hear what I said? You will always need to grow to obey every instruction that comes. Faith. You need faith for exploits. You need faith to remain in health. You need faith to advance. You need faith to break the barriers that life will bring before you. I'm praying for someone here. In the name of Jesus. Doubt, a life of fear, a life that is not consistent with the word of God. I'm praying that that kind of living comes to an end. Yeah. Say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, obtain grace I obtain grace to walk by faith. Walk by faith. Say it again in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I obtain grace okay. to walk by faith. Right. Turn that prayer, turn it to prayer in one minute. I obtain grace. To walk by faith you will build that house by faith there are no guarantees anywhere that ministry will excel by faith your organization will rise and scale and grow by faith
In Jesus name I pray. The third is power. Power is a very important component. I just felt stirred in my heart to just start by showing you these three components. Can I tell you, every time you hear a man of God dispensing the word, this is the, these are the coordinates of his discussion. He's communicating the wisdom of God. He's planting faith in your heart or he's supplying power to your destiny by the Spirit. Luke 1, 34, 35. Gabriel comes to Mary, bringing her glad tidings and telling her that she's going to be with child and that a man will not play any role in the arrival of that child. And he said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? How shall these things be, seeing that I currently do not have a land in Lagos? How shall these things be, seeing that my mother and my father have passed on to glory? How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? The answer for you this morning is found in verse 35. Let's read together in concert when we have it projected. Verse 35, ready? One, two, read. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Stop there. The Holy Ghost. How shall that business go forward? The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Where will the clients come from? The Holy Ghost will come upon them and the power of the highest will gravitate them towards you. How shall these things be? Listen, let me tell you the truth. It is not every part of the believer's journey that is explainable. You know God is leading you because there must be a mystery component to your result. It is not every part of your result that can answer to science. It is not every part of your result that should answer to logic. There should be a part of your result that only being spiritual can explain it. If your results are always economic, always intellectual, always logical, then it's not God helping you. You are just using common sense. There is a dimension to authentic result that only spirituality can explain. Like Pastor shared before I came up, Laban went and consulted by divination and he said, I have learned that God has blessed me for your sake. You came into my house with something upon your head and it's redefining the finances, redefining the wealth, the estate of this family. Power is important. Many things, in fact, all things answer to power. Yes, sir. He says, by you I can run through a troop and by my God I can leap over a wall. It takes the power of the highest. And it's in light of that I just want to show you one key and then we'll pray. Is someone ready for power this morning? Genesis 27. The long read is 1 to 20. I will save us that right for reference. I would... Um, so here is Isaac, the father of Jacob and Esau. Are we together? This is coming to the end of his days and he's about to speak a blessing upon his sons. Then he calls on Esau and says, Esau, you are my son. I want you to go to the field. Listen carefully. I hope you know that Isaac was a rich man. Isaac had cattle. Isaac had everything abundant. But he said, I do not want the one from my house. I want you to go to the field for me. Go and get an animal. Come and make me venison such as my soul loves. Because I want to declare a blessing, to confer a blessing upon you. And then I will die. And while that discussion was happening, Rebecca, their mother, was somewhere listening. On hearing that, Esau departed with joy to go and hunt. Are we still together? And then she calls Jacob and says, Jacob, my son, quickly, go to the back of the house and get uh, an, an animal and prepare. I will prepare everything and give you. Your father is about to release something, something spiritual, something science cannot explain. He said, quickly. He said, but my brother is a hairy person. My father will feel him. At this point, Isaac is blind. Are we together? And he said, don't worry, we'll find a way, we'll, we'll develop a strategy so that once he feels you, he will feel the hair and think it's your brother. And that was done while Jacob, now notice, 
two of them were doing something. One was at home trying to get the kid to prepare it. The mother was helping him and Esau was at the field. Now go to verse 20, please. Genesis chapter 20, chapter 27. Let's do 19 and 20. Genesis. And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau. Because he now came with the venison. And the father is saying, what is going on here? I am Esau, thy firstborn. Now, I hope you know he was lying. But I just want to draw a principle out of it. I'm not saying you should tell lies. Are we together? But I want to draw a principle out of it. I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. And I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison that thou may bless me. May God open someone's eyes now. I want you to shout verse 20 with all your heart and with everything you have. Are you ready? One to read. And Isaac said to his son, How is it that thou art found it so quickly? Stop. Stop. He said, No. This kind of result should not happen by this time. I am blind, but I know how long it takes to go to the field and to find venison, prepare it and bring it. How is it? By what technology have you arrived this early? Give me the answer again in a chorus. One to go. One more time. How was your business so established in one year? This does not happen. It defies economic principles. We've been in this thing for a long time. We've been in ministry for years. How is it that God has lifted you and caused you to be global so quickly? And Jacob said, I, a part of your mentorship to me is that speed is a possibility in the kingdom. He said, because the Lord brought it, I can look for it and find it, but the Lord can bring it to me. Turn that into prayer in one minute. There are things God can bring to men. Is someone praying? How is it that thou has found it quickly? How is it that thou has found it quickly? How did you get the land so quickly? How did you connect to help us so quickly? He said it is because the Lord has brought it to me. 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 Go ahead, please pray. <laughs> ah, someone's life is changing this morning. My God. My God, someone's destiny is changing. How is it that thou has found it so quickly? How did you get the promotion quickly? How did you ascend in the spirit so quickly? By this time last year, you were not saved. But right now, you are not just saved. You are filled with the Holy Ghost, carrying fire. How did you grow so quickly? Because Lord, Pastor, pray. Businessman, pray because the Lord has brought it to me. Because the Lord has assisted me. Because there is a God factor in the equation of my destiny. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom 
Let's build a nations. See Jesus lifted up. Glorify. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I tell you, something is shifting in your destiny. Believe me on this. Now, please sit for a moment. Be very sensitive. Very sensitive this morning. Speed is defined as your rate of accomplishment with respect to time. Your rate of accomplishment. Speed in the kingdom and as touching this context. We are not discussing physics here. Speed with respect to destiny actualization is defined as the rate of accomplishment with respect to time. The amount of, of accomplishment that can be done can be manifested through the life of an individual with respect to time. It's called speed. When God wants to help you, he grants you grace to be able to do so much within a short time. Now, let me tell you why speed is important, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, the unit of destiny is time. The unit of destiny. Destiny is measured as a function of time. And we know that under normal circumstances, let me your attention please. Under normal circumstances, time is irreversible. Are we together? Time cannot be reversed. That means we cannot go into May 2024 ever again. It's gone. Gone forever. That means when time passes, as we say, many things have gone with that time. Under normal circumstances. That means we are called to be efficient. In fact, Jesus said this in John 9, I believe verse 4 thereabout. He said, I must walk the walks of him that sent me. Listen, while it is day for the night cometh where no man can walk again. In Ephesians chapter 5, when you read verse 15 particularly, he was speaking about walking circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. He said, redeeming the time because the days are evil redeeming the time because the days are evil the word redeem means to buy back he begins to introduce a concept how does a man buy back time are we together there are three things i've learned about time number one time can be invested time can be spent and time can be wasted time can be invested Time can be spent and time like currency can be wasted. Now, for various reasons, for various reasons, please listen. I, and and I, I just connect what I'm saying now to the teaching of pastor yesterday. I believe that this is a prophetic message that God is bringing about this issue of time. Remember pastor spoke a bit about delay yesterday? Are we together? For various reasons, the average believer right now already has time against him. Are we together? For various reasons. Let me give you some of them. For reasons of ignorance, for reasons of carelessness, for reasons of demonic factors, many already have time against them. We have carved out a name. We have given a name for a situation where time is against a man we call it delay we call it stagnation delay or stagnation is the name given to a situation where time is already against you in other words there's so much to be done in your life but you are not catching up at the pace of the time that is left if you are to live 80 years on earth and you celebrate 50 years you are not celebrating 50 years you are celebrating 30 years remaining are we together listen very carefully because this might concern many people now for various reasons many already have time against them i'm telling you this for starters 
Many people did not get to know God early. I hope you know it takes time to know God and to grow. Number two, many did not have the privilege of being planted under a teaching priest for structured mentorship early. And so they kept going around in circles and wasting their time. Are we together? There are two scriptural ways to redeem time. My God. Huh. Every time God wants to help a man redeem time, he introduces two things to your life. Number one is called restoration. Number two is called speed. Please don't forget this. These are the two scriptural ways to receive help from God with respect to time. One is called restoration. Say restoration. restoration. Two is called time. I mean it's called speed. Restoration. What does it mean to restore? To restore means to bring events. Events that should have happened and to put them in your today. Events that could not happen in your yesterday. God is able to draw those events and bring it in your today. This is God for you. The destiny helper you would have met in 2019, but because of carelessness and insensitivity, the person came and passed and you could not see and recognize. God is able to reschedule a scenario in your today that still makes you meet that person again. It's called restoration. Does that look like what is happening to someone? That in the name of Jesus, what could not happen because you were not sensitive? It came as an impression, but at that point, you had not grown spiritually to know what that impulse meant. And certain doors passed you. Certain opportunities opened and closed and you were not there. I'm praying for you, the God of all grace, even the Father of spirits, may he reschedule events for you again. Reschedule events for you again. Give you another opportunity again. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 28, Jacob had an opportunity to encounter the God of the Bible. But he was careless and he was not sensitive. He saw a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth with angels ascending and descending. Every time you see angels in motion, it means that God is, there is a transaction happening. And the angels go and come for the sake of the saints. Yet there was no portion for him in that encounter. How do you see such a glorious encounter and nothing got to you? He got up and said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. Do you know that it was after that event that the whole story in Laban's house started? Only God knows the message the angels would have told him that perhaps would have avoided a lot of tragedies in Laban's house. The next time Jacob meets with God is in chapter 32. And this time around, he was sensitive enough. God rescheduled an event again. God restores all. I want you to believe this. Are we together? God restores. God can restore. He can restore joy. He can restore peace. He can restore finances. You doubt me, ask Job. Job, a man who loved God, he got to a point where his life was torn into pieces. But in Job 42 and verse 10, I like this. The Bible says, and God, God restored. Give it to us, please. The Bible says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. So the name of what Job went through was called captivity. But the Lord turned the captivity of Job. It says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. Turn our captivity around. Let it be as though we were dreaming. Restoration. And then number two is speed. Let me give you four keys. Very quickly. I'll just list them and then we'll pray. Four keys that activates acceleration and speed. Is someone ready to go forward? Four keys. When God wants to bring speed to a man, he helps you by opening you up to these four keys and then you have accelerated accomplishments within a short period of time. Number one, wisdom. The first key that controls speed in the kingdom is wisdom. The presence of wisdom. Write for reference Matthew chapter 25, 1 to 13. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. 
There's no time to discuss that, but that was the story of the ten virgins. The first thing about that story is that all ten were virgins. So it's not an issue of righteousness or unrighteousness. It was an issue of wisdom and foolishness. Are we together? And the principal factor that made the difference was the delay of the arrival of the bridegroom. If the bridegroom arrived early, all of them would be perceived as wise. It was delay that showed who was wise or who was foolish. Are we together? And the wisdom of the five was that they carried extra oil. Whereas the other five carried only healthy lanterns with just enough for that time. The morale of that story is that you can be righteous like the ten virgins and you will still suffer, the door will close and you'll be outside. It was not righteousness and unrighteousness. Ten virgins, but five were called wise, five were called foolish. Everybody say wisdom. Wisdom can help you to have accelerated accomplishments within a short time accelerated accomplishments for instance it is wisdom that teaches you as a leader to be able to multiply your results by setting up systems and structures are we together Moses was wearing himself as a good leader because he did not know how to multiply his capacity and his results and then a man called Jethro his father-in-law called him and said listen you are a good leader but from an administrative standpoint you will weary yourself and you will die the death of a fool he said set up teams are we together in thousands and hundreds train and appoint people so that they carry out all these things and then you handle the weightier matters wisdom brings efficiency to men to organizations wisdom so many people can do much more but they are not able to do it they are not able to take advantage of the supplies of wisdom number two favor exodus 12 36 favor this one is powerful. Favor. When God wants to grant a man speed, he gives you an opportunity to encounter favor. Can we shout this together? Exodus chapter 12 and verse 36. One to go. Uh huh. You only get such things as you require through favor. Such things as you require. The Lord gave the people favor. Such things as they require. Esther chapter 2, please. Esther chapter 2. I like this one. Verse 8 and 9. This is Esther being prepared by Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins, to go and meet the king. Here's what the Bible says, 8 and 9. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also. So she was not the only one. Esther was part of the many young ladies. To the custody of Haggai, the keeper of the women. Read verse 9 hallelujah and the maiden pleased him and she obtained kindness of him what was the effect and he speedily gave her stop what did he do it's not enough to give you must be given on time you can be given too late the bible says because the hand of god was upon her the man speedily gave her speedily gave her speedily gave her is that a prophecy for someone speedily gave her in the name of Jesus Christ there are people who apply for jobs and it is within the power of the corporation to give them jobs but they keep everything there until the day you are owing you are owing what 10 years salary cannot pay you then they now give you the job you have been given but it came late are we together now one of the things I learned about money is that if it does not come on time, its purpose will not serve. Money serves its purpose when it comes at the right time. Are we together? If you were supposed to fly someone, say, for treatment, and you need, say, 10 million naira, and the money arrives two days to the person's death, it came, it arrived, but not on time. 
satisfy me early with your mercies. Is that in your Bible? Someone say, Father. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Shout it. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I obtain grace for speed through favor. Pray in one minute. Favor, favor. He gave us speedily. 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 In the name of Jesus, he gave us speedily. Please be seated. Hallelujah. So favor is connected to speed. That when the favor and the kindness of God comes upon a person, men will respond to you speedily. Systems will respond to you speedily. Number three, the third key that controls speed. Are we learning? You can pray speed provoking prayers. Speed provoking prayers. Speed provoking prayers. In 1 Kings chapter 18, when you read from verse 42 to 46, just write down for reference, 1 Kings 18, 42 to 46. My Bible, your Bible says that Elijah began to pray, praying for rain. He bowed himself and prayed, and he prayed again, and he prayed again, and he prayed again. Go to 46, please. By the time we get to 46, the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran. He ran before Ahab and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. The hand of God can come upon a man. Are we together? You can pray favor provoking prayers, but you can pray speed provoking prayers. Father, give me speed. Give me speed. Bring speed to my life. Bring speed to my business. Jesus was praying whilst he asked the other people to go to the other side. They used the boat and they left. They were six hours ahead of Jesus. So based on that, that scenario, you would say Jesus had been delayed for six hours. There were six hours, but as soon as Jesus was done praying, he did not need a boat again. He got up and started walking on water. In a short time, he had caught up with them. They saw him and thought he was a ghost. And that was when they said, if it be, if it be thou bid me come. That means, can I come into this experience too? I was using a boat, and yes, you walked on foot. And he said, everyone can come. You can come. You can come out. A boat is a good means of transportation, but not the only means of transportation. There is another technology that can empower men that by foot you will even walk on water. If it be thou. The miracle in that story was not walking on water. The miracle on that story was showing that boat is not the only way to transport yourself to the other side. There are those who left you while you were praying and serving in church with no job. They said you will, if you just serve in church like this, your life will be miserable and you are feeling bad. It's been 10 years, no job. Let me tell you, there is a hand that can come upon men. And when that hand rests upon you in one year, you can get a job that is equal to someone's lifetime pay or establish a business that will bring you someone's breakthrough for life in one year. I believe this. Speed provoking prayer. Speed provoking prayer. Speed provoking prayer. God is able to give men speed when you take the time to pray. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a story. I remember back then in Zaria when we started, I saw visions of the many things that God is doing, some of them already manifested now. And I was wondering. How would God make these things come to pass? Because I didn't understand how these things were going to happen. How these things were going to come to pass. And I kept submitting myself in prayer because strategies come when we pray. Listen carefully. And I remember at that time, um, you know, the social media space was not the way it is now. And the Lord gave me an instruction. That time we did not even have videos. 
and he gave one instruction. He said, take your teachings and put them on social media and my angel will take it to the nations. And that is how I will announce you to the nations, right from where you are. I didn't have access to the people and the systems and the structures that could provide a leverage for rising. There was no human way of gaining visibility with, with the, 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 the current context as it was at that time. And with that simple instruction that came from the place of prayer, the rest is history. I can only say glory to God. Let me tell you the truth. Every time invested in strategic prayer is a time redemption adventure. Never see the time you invest in prayer as a waste. No. Prayer does not do everything. But where prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When you engage wisdom, prayer helps you to engage wisdom efficiently. Are we together? When you communicate value, prayer helps you to communicate value efficiently. You can pray speed-provoking prayers. You can go to God and say, Father, I've made mistakes with my life. I didn't make the right choices. I was not serious about God. When people were serious with the things of God, I was there loitering around. And right now, I'm already disadvantaged as far as time and destiny is concerned. But give me speed. Bring speed to my life. If Jabez could pray, oh God, bless me, enlarge my territory. He was, the Bible says that the mother cursed him because of her pain. She called him Jabez. But a day came, he took that responsibility and he says, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That means you can pray and say, God, give me speed. There are many of us who came from families where you have to solve the problems that were created before your arrival, before you even start facing your own destiny. As it is now, you've not started living your destiny yet. You are paying the price and correcting something that happened yesteryears. Enemies that were gathered before your arrival. You are still, you are still on a reconciliatory process with enemies that, that were brought by parents and people. First, before you start solving the problem of your life and you are in your 40s now or 50s now when will you finish that and then turn back and say i have my destiny you need speed say speed speed, speed. a man who started fighting with your father before your father passed on the man has vowed that for as long as he's alive you will not find peace and he's in a position as a gatekeeper now a major part of your life is being spent trying to broker reconciliation Finally, the man has gone to be with the Lord. But the price for waiting until he passed was 45 years of your life. When are you going to start that journey again? Because of that, no corporation could give you anything. Your name had been stained by that man. The man is dead, but the stain on your name is still there. No corporation will give you contracts. When are you going to tell them I'm innocent? It was a battle between my father, not me. There are many inherited battles that people are carrying. They inherited names that became padlocks and it locked many doors. You spent your life opening the padlock, not opening the door. Now you've opened the padlock. To open the door, you are even weak to open the door. You need help. Someone say, help me God. One more time, help me God. And so when Isaac asked Jacob, as Esau now, he said, how come you have brought this speedily? He said, it is because the Lord has brought it to me. 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 Hmm. Hallelujah. The final key that controls speed is the power of prophetic declarations. The prophetic is a mysterious spiritual operation that is able to bring speed. Second Kings 7, we'll read verse 1 and then we'll go to verse 18 for time. Because this is what is about to happen to someone. Second Kings 7, verse 1. Second Kings 7, thank you. Verse 1 and then verse 18. 
Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this, Tomorrow about this, It is still a discussion of time. Tomorrow about this time, Shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel, And two measures of barley for a shekel At the gates of Samaria. Go to verse 18. Verse 18 says, And it came to pass. I like that statement. And it came as the man of God had spoken to the king saying, This and that and that will happen. The man said, By this time tomorrow. And it came to pass. I don't want to bore you with how it came to pass. But it's an interesting story to read. Because the miracle happened through four lepers people who were incapacitated the spirit of God began to move around them the idea was always there but the grace to receive it was not there one day they said look why sit we here till we die he said let's just get up and give ourselves to our enemies perhaps we are of no use to ourselves when prophecy comes anything can be used as a tool whether it is a stick to bring the axe head out whether it is a donkey to speak to you once a prophetic word comes everything you have will be enough to bring that prophecy to pass once prophecy comes even if it's a little cruise of oil you have in your house the prophetic can do something to it it can multiply what do you have in your house nothing except a little cruise of oil he said that's it with the power of prophecy i hope you know that the miracle the woman received was not just the miracle of multiplication the first miracle was where to go and get the vessels from and then those to buy it after filling the oil all of them were miracles it was one thing to get vessels so there were people who could borrow her why didn't they borrow her money to pay the debt it was prophecy that positioned those people don't you think he just said go and borrow vessels her problem was that she was alone there was no man to help her. So her children were going as collateral. But when the prophet came, he said, men have been positioned to help you. Meet them. The same way Jesus said, go to a street that the rivers divide. You will see, go to a street that the roads divide. You will see a cult that no man, not even the owner. That means there are people holding things that is not for them. They are caretakers. Not even the owner had ridden on lose that colt and bring to me and if they ask you say the master hath need of it there are people holding opportunities it came by revelation but it's not given to them to execute it they've kept it on their table waiting for the one who prophecy will connect to them listen we're going to pray in the next one or two minutes my time is up but two things will happen one is that in the place of prayer you are going to agree with God that a grace will rest upon your life that will bring speed to your life speed to your destiny Genesis 27 and verse 20 please keep that scripture projected while we pray when I looked at my life and I saw all the disadvantages that were there by default ministerial area of my life I made up my mind that I was going to learn about favor and learn about speed because if these forces were not at work in my life based on my assessment I didn't have a chance for an excelling life most of us here have already been dragged down by life for various reasons I want you to know that there is hope this morning and grace is about to rest upon you and Isaac said to his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly how did you find the answers quickly how did you scale the business so quickly this will be your answer from today because the Lord thy God brought it to me there are things you look for by yourself but there are things that God brings quickly I don't have time to show you certain things but when God wants to help you, maybe let me take a minute and talk about your finances. There are two ways to prosper. One is by your value. When you exchange your value, you refine it, you exchange it and serve it with excellence. But when God wants to give you acceleration, he connects you with established people. The money you are looking for is currently with established people. 
Money is a zero-sum game. It's not lying anywhere. It is in somebody's account right now from a financial standpoint. When God wants to help you, he creates proximity between you and helpers. The helpers are established people. It is the person who has that can give the person who does not have. Are we together? Relationships are powerful. Who likes you matters. Everybody blesses according to his riches. Everybody. So when God wants to help you, in addition to your value and everything you have, he will connect you to strategic relationships. One strategic relationship like Lot and Abraham. One strategic relationship like Abraham and Abimelech. One strategic relationship like Esther and Ahasuerus. One strategic relationship like Ruth and Boaz can redefine your possibilities. Are we together? Let's rise. I don't know what you may have gone through. I don't know what you are going through right now. Perhaps in light of the prevalent economic situation, perhaps in your organization, perhaps in your spiritual life. But I want you to know, I started by telling you that there are tripartite three forces you need as far as your excelling in life is concerned. Wisdom and faith and power. Are we together? And that God is able to enhance a man's destiny by granting him access to speed. You're going to pray one prayer, one faith-filled, heartfelt prayer. Lord, bring speed to my life. Someone pray, bring speed to my life. Bring speed to my life. Let it be a very sincere prayer. Bring speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. That when men say, how is it that thou has found favor in ministry? How is it that Lagos has opened up to you so quickly? You can say like Jacob. It is because the Lord has brought it to me. It is because the Lord has shown me mercy. It is because the Lord has given me the treasures of darkness and the secret riches in secret, the riches in secret places. It is because the Lord has taught my fingers to fight, my hands to war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me stand on the existing grace now and speak over your life. Oh, your season has come. Oh, your season has come. Oh, salvation has come. Oh, salvation has come. Oh, my help has come. Oh, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I stretch my hands over everyone under the sound of my voice, and I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead right now the grace for speed wherever you are i decree and declare may that grace rest on you now may that grace rest on you now take that grace now in the name of jesus please help that gentleman help those under the anointing so they don't injure themselves i decree and declare where you have been crawling i give you wings in the spirit you will run like elijah in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, may my God put 10 years in one year, 10 years in one year, one year in one month, 10 years in one year, 10 years in one month, in the name of Jesus. Where you have been forsaken, so that no man will walk through you. 
I call you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Hear me, in the name that is above all names, I pray for you. Anybody who has what it takes to lift you, listen, listen. The man at Bethesda, John 5, when Jesus came and said, why are you still in this situation? His answer is found in verse 7. He said, I have no man. When the water is there to help me, I have no man. I pray for you. The north, the east, the south, and the west, wherever the helpers of your destiny are, I declare by prophecy, may they gravitate towards you. 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 In the name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 2, when you read from verse 28, it says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. The secrets of the Lord, the Bible says, is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenants. We triumph in life on the strength of the secrets we have found, the mysteries of the kingdom. I pray for someone, the miracle of open eyes. The miracle of open eyes. May you see what others have not seen. Let it give you an edge in life. Let it give you an edge in business. Let it give you an edge in your career. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. Some of you are great warriors. But it takes beyond a bow and a spear to bring Goliath. Just because you have tools, don't mean you are allowed to use any of them. You must be directed on what tool brings what victory. You may have your armory, but if you stand before Goliath with your sword, you may not defeat Goliath. If you stand before Jericho with your weapons, you may not scale through. Are we together now? God must reveal to you what strategy exerts dominion over what season. The challenge with many people is because the Red Sea parted, you always want the Red Sea to part. There are times the river will not part. You will walk on water. There are times God will give you a boat. The strategy for every season, I impart that grace upon you. The strategy for every season, I impart that grace upon you. The strategy pre-COVID may not be the same strategy post-COVID. Just because you succeeded before COVID, the grace to reinvent yourself, the grace to evolve, the grace to innovate, to obtain higher and greater strategies applicable for the time, I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, where you have been stagnated, like Moses told the nation of Israel, go forward, go forward, go forward, make progress, accelerate, go forward, I prophesy, go forward, Elevation Church, the global expressions, go forward in America, go forward in Canada, go forward in Europe, go forward in Lagos, go forward in Abuja, by all godly means, make progress, in the name of Jesus, run through troops, leap over walls, in the name of Jesus, let there be an avalanche of testimonies, let young people in this church do mighty things before the end of 2024. In the name of Jesus, accelerated testimonies, excelling in ministry, excelling in business, excelling in family, excelling in careers. I open the tulip gates of nations for you. Access the nations needed for your rising. Access the nations needed for your shining. Access systems and structures. We put them under pressure for your sake. Financial systems, economic systems, political systems. We put them under pressure for your sake. By all means, go forward. Go forward in righteousness. Go forward in grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as you make progress, I pray for your spiritual life. You will not prosper at the expense of your prayer life. You will not prosper at the extent at the expense of your integrity. You will not prosper at the extent the expense of your loving Jesus. 
that while you rise, while you accelerate, while you make progress, while you command speed, may your fire never die. May your prayer altar never go down. May your consecration never be compromised. In the name of Jesus, we are going to shout seven believing amens and I'm done. Are you ready now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. God bless you. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.